two, three, four. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. My name is Christoph Zürn, and this is the podcast for people with a musical heart and a wicked job. We're looking for stories, insights, and tools from the big world of music to inspire leaders and followers to listen, tune, play, and perform in whatever field you're operating. My guest today is Raf de Kenning, executive member, director of education, research and organization of the Design Academy Eindhoven, one of the world's leading design schools. And Raf is also a performing musician, clarinet player and conductor. He played, for example, at the beginning of the 2000s, 300 concerts a year. We start with sharing the incredible dreams he had as a child and a unique ritual he did in his adolescent years. And we get some insights into his leadership skills. For example, the advantages of having an outside view combined with excellent listening skills and the practice of not knowing and how to let inspiration flow in two ways. So when you're open, then people also will be open. We talk about leading and following and Raf explains what it means as a conductor to have a total overview and a well-defined score and how you can lead without explicitly leading. And there's another story of a conductor shouting at an orchestra and how the musicians were teaching him a lesson. All right, here we go. Welcome, Raf. Welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. Thank you. <laughs> nice to finally come together. I think it mm -hmm. was more or less one year that we spoke very briefly. Yeah, it was quite an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and to, today is the day. Yeah. We're here in the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Yes. And I always start my talks or my conversation with one question. And it's, it's like a ritual. And it, um, yeah, it's a, actually it's my favorite question. And it goes like this. Um, what was your first sonic experience or album or performance that had an impact on you? Ooh, that's a nice question. Um, yeah, of course, there is, there is, in my life, there was always music because my father was a little bit uh, the driving force <laughs> to me uh, around music. So he was all the time there and, and, musician by, his, by, by himself um, and there was a quite curious thing when I was really young like four five six years old um, I dreamed uh, about orchestras wow. <laughs> yeah it's 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 Ooh. a little bit crazy story because I was always dreaming about orchestras and I was conducting the orchestras even I was not quite already busy with conducting or something it was really, and suddenly it stopped and i was really afraid like oh now it's away um this this day by day experience every night and then suddenly it stops uh, and then of course my father did an introduction to many many different styles of music uh, most of them classical but he was by himself uh, a jazz musician so um so I, 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 yeah, I heard a lot of music, but then when I was, uh, I think, 13 years old, uh, I had a kind of ritual, and it's really, it is also a little bit special because between my 13 and my 17 years, every day I listened to the eighth, uh, the eighth symphony of uh, Mahler. Oh, wow. every day. <laughs> so Come on, that's the symphony for the thousand, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because wow. It's a big, uh, <laughs> big, uh, uh, noisy thing, um, and. Yeah, why I don't know. Uh, I remember I had a kind of um, uh, yeah connection with the library, and they had some recordings. And suddenly I, I found this 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 disc. Uh, I, I rented it. I went home, and I was really totally impressed about the piece. Um, actually, I think a lot of uh, elements of this piece are also in my character and the person I am. Um, and every day I was listening to this to this symphony at least once, and every day, time I discovered new new elements in it, and uh, it was um, 
the recording with uh, Schulte, uh, with Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fantastic recording. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, so now I know this piece by heart, every note. <laughs> later, <laughs> later I discovered the score and uh, I studied it. Uh, when I was in the conservatory, but uh, that's that's the main piece of my life, let's say. <laughs> wow, un- unbelievable! And and um, I really have to process what you just said, <laughs> and maybe the listener too. So just uh, in the, the the first thing, how can you as a child dream about conducting? Yeah, so that's, that's, that's really special. I, I don't know. I really don't know. It's it was it was there, like like uh, your father is there, your mother is there, your family is there. And uh, and it suddenly it was also away, so I, when I'm really a little bit um, um, believe in in strange things, I think oh maybe I was in for in former life uh, a conductor or something like that. But but yeah, let's say that's that's uh, I don't believe that. But um, there, there there has to be some there was a kind of influence that I took it with me and uh, had yeah like one or two years these dreams. Uh, th- it stopped. It was like, oh, now I'm I, I'm I, I'm losing it. Yeah? Like maybe the the biggest fear of musicians losing uh, uh, this this special feeling. Sometimes you have it, like oh, now it's my, and then it comes back. Now these dreams, yeah, of course I dreamed from conducting later, but it was not the same uh, intense feeling. Wow. Uh, so bah. Wow. I can't explain, but uh, that's that's yeah. uh, maybe that's one of the first things I remember from from life because when you are so young, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, and maybe these are the nicest things, the things that you can't explain, because course, they yeah. they keep you busy in one way, and it's also nonverbal. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about you? So who are you? What do you do for a living? So um, actually, there are a few things important to mention. I'm I'm I'm. Originally, I'm from Flanders, and I'm working and living in the Netherlands. That's that's uh, that's also a quite big experience, I, I can tell you. And to um, some listeners, we have to explain that Flanders. Then you mean Belgium? Yeah, <laughs> or the, the Belgium-speaking uh, or the Flemish-speaking part in Belgium. The Flemish-speaking part of Belgium. Now, this yeah, you have all these political situations that that, and it's hard to explain. But Flanders is something else than Belgium, and, and, and so uh, from my origin, I'm from Flanders. Maybe the Dutch, the Dutch people say uh, easily like uh, Belg. Huh? Um, you are from Belgium, but I think most of the people living in Belgium they are they say I'm from Flanders, I'm from Brussels, or I'm from Wallonie. Yeah. Um, so I'm from Flanders. But but um, yeah, I'm now um, <laughs> I've got stuck stuck in uh, in the Netherlands. But um, from origi- or originally I'm a musician. I studied a uh, conservatory in Antwerp. With a quite famous uh, clarinet professor Walter Buikens, um, and I studied also conducting uh, and all these things you have to study, and then uh, I became a musician. So I was one of the lucky guys who got um, live uh, without teaching. So I was just uh, uh, performing all the time. I had my own ensemble. On yeah, somewhere beginning 2000, I was conducting and playing 300 concerts in a year so it was uh, quite quite a lot wow 300 uh, concerts yeah, in yeah. a year it was uh, how many days has a year let me <laughs> let me see yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy times because i was living like 24 days in a month in, in hotel and, and traveling and, yes. and doing crazy stuff and uh, have a really nice life and so on and so on but then there came a crisis in 2008 and um, yeah that was the first time i was like okay now i'm don't remember I was 35 years old or something like that oh I have to think about the future and 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 and, uh, and all these things and then I started uh, to teach uh, at the conservatory in Tilburg um, and then after sh- six months or something like that uh, they asked like okay there is a place vacancy for vacancy for, for to, to become director here mm. yeah maybe it's good you do uh, take uh, these exams and so on and uh, so I decided to uh, to do that, and uh, I was there for eight years, and I'm planning to go uh, abroad. There were a few conservatoria in Europe uh, possible, uh, and suddenly I received a call from Design Academy, uh, and um, yeah, I was surprised because it was also a little bit like, okay, but I'm a musician, 
and uh, but okay, we, we did these rounds, this typical uh, selection uh, procedure, and um, on the end, uh, <laughs> I remember me. Uh, I was in I was in Portugal enjoying a holiday and they, they called me they said okay congratulations you can start and I was like oh <laughs> holy now I have to, <laughs> to be director of a, of a design school and uh, is that what I want to do and and so on but on the end for me it was really important that uh, a design school choose a conductor yeah. uh, as a leader and uh, so I uh, I said yes and, uh, and we started three years. Uh, ago and uh, it's a fantastic journey because it's it's a uh, actually there is a kind of big paradigm in this in this in this institute because yeah, it's a world famous institute yep. uh, with, with students from around the world with teachers from around the world it's 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 a high level but it's just an institute with 800 students so it's mm. really small so it's it seems like really big uh, but on the end, it's just a building with 800 students in it. So, 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 and this paradigm is also complex to, to handle, um, but really interesting uh, uh, to guide. And of course, I'm not uh, working uh, on, on my own. I have a, a really nice team and a colleague, Joseph Grima, living in Italy. He's, um, he's a creative director. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's happening now in my life. Wow. So, yeah, that's a, that's a very special one because Design Academy Eindhoven it's wow well, world world fame mm -hmm. and uh, yeah what you just said people come from all over the world just to be here and to be led by a musician yes or <laughs> <laughs> so d did you know how, how what did they explain to you why they choose you um, yeah no, of course. On that moment, they don't explain. But afterwards, you feel like um, your approach, and maybe also the fact. And for me, that's that's for me personally, it's the most important thing. I can really be really honest and tell colleagues and teachers like, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't really not know anything from what you are saying. So explain mm. it to me and give me really open advice and mm. we can talk on a really open way and of course when you are uh, leading a conservatory everybody sitting on the table knows you are a musician yeah. you have these 20 years of practice in the fields and you can say i don't know <laughs> but mm -hmm. now i really can honestly say i really don't know but help me and yeah. this this position this is a really interesting uh, position and i think um Maybe, of course, conducting on its own is it's also a little bit connected with ego and, and, and taking position. But maybe this is this is really interesting to practice also as a conductor. Mm. Uh, because when you come, when you work with an orchestra and you do a second Brahms or you do another piece, mm -hmm. of course, you have conducted it 10 times, but yeah. the orchestra has played it 200 times. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so actually... Uh, get flow this inspiration in two, in two uh, ways, that's really interesting. And that's what's happening now. So, um, yeah, and that feels really good. So, so you're, you fall back in, in that sense on your listening skills. Yes. Because also as a conductor, you don't make any sound. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, the orchestra is your instrument, but let's, let's face it, you're also a clarinet player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a difference between making directly a sound and making indirectly a sound, and, and that's interesting for for leading people, or yeah, yeah. maybe I'm, I'm, I don't know if if you also call it leading, but helping them to 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 be their best. Yeah. And um, I wonder if they would have a choice between a conductor and an improviser. What would be different because the improviser is is making a noise, <laughs> mm -hmm. because an improviser is always performing, has always his instrument, and on the other hand, it's very hard to listen if you if you play. Yeah, that, that's that's all true. Uh, I think there is also something in the idea of a new of an overview, having the overview, uh, having the score, having this this uh, taking this part of the job. Um, 
And to be honest, we have such a high skilled uh, um, uh, teacher group here. Um, I think it's just they need support. I'm, I'm not calling it really leading. I think also an orchestra where starts the leading and where stops it because I once met a really smart old conductor and um, he gave a master class uh, Verdi Requiem and I was uh, conducting this in London and uh, I was saying okay I go to this master class because then I, I can prepare and maybe get some good tips um, and and he told like okay when 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 I'm conducting I'm not conducting and then I stop and say you are too early you are too late you are, you have to do this you have to do this is more legato and so on and so on no no I I listen to it and I adjust my way of conducting so the people are doing it without knowing they are doing that mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. so you solve a lot of problems a lot of challenges by acting on another way and and seeing uh, possibilities and that's that's a trick you only can do when you have totally overview yeah and i think um uh, leading <laughs> between bracklets uh, such an institute as design academy but maybe also other institutes uh, it's more about having this overview and uh, good listening skills and then yeah on the end somebody has to take the decisions of course yeah. um, but this this yin and yang it's it's almost yin yeah. and yang between the two uh, it's leading and following yeah, yeah so sometimes you follow the orchestra and yeah, sometimes they follow you and sometimes you try to lead and sometimes the other way around yeah, and i think that's 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 a good way the, the good way to work because you have also a lot of conductors they are really strict in what they want and not giving some air or some space to the orchestra mm -hmm. Um, ah, of course, that can be a style, but that's also a management style. Yeah? You, we all know these strong leaders, the really hard guys who rah, uh, go from the power. Um, I, I, I think music, what's the most ins inspirating thing in music is, is like coloring the air, like, like this first note in a, in, in a concert hall, putting down like here mm -hmm. it can grow or it can be. Um, and secondly is this, and of course you will recognize or all musicians will recognize this feeling like when one second is getting two seconds, like this space within the space, this space within the beat. Uh, and of course there is a beat and there is a, there's, there's, a, there's a timing, but then between the beat the space and when you are not giving this air, mm. uh, also in a company, but also in music, then this will not grow. Uh, and, and, and often you see when you work a long time with people or with an orchestra and sometimes doing the same pieces, then suddenly there is immense uh, space to, to do something mm -hmm. in the timing. Yeah. But the music is not changing. But, but you know, that, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. To, to make the link to the, to the conducting, um, it's also you're the chief listener and you are also the one who is really paying attention. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and that's not, and let's say Big Brother is watching you, but it's the other, you know, you, you're, you're, yeah, your, your best friend is watching you mm -hmm. because you're in, in this together. So I, 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 I like that, that very much. And, but on the other hand, um, you just talked about the score. And in classical music, you need a score. Mm -hmm. And that's, it depends on the kind of music, let's say uh, real classical music, so years ago, 20, mm -hmm. 200 years ago. Um, everything is written exactly since uh, Beethoven, we all uh, know what the beat is, uh, so mm -hmm. MM, so Melzels Metronom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or BPM, beats per yeah. minute, in, uh, in, in modern times. And um, in, in, in my theory, I use score in both, in, in, in two ways. I say one, and by the way, that's more the, the following part. It's mm -hmm. also leading and following, like a yin and yang, and what you mm -hmm. just said. And the one is more uh, showing, and the other one is to do. Meaning, if you have a vision of a company, and you, you, you say where you stand for, mm -hmm. um, you get a lot of people that get inspired by it, but the next day, they don't know what to do. Yeah. And the to-do would be, as the analogy, um, would be like if you're playing Beethoven fifth and you're the trumpet, you know you don't play in the first eight bars, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I can imagine that there, there are 
some kind of players, and, and then, then if we look from classical music, we'd say, okay, a classical um, uh, player, he wants the score, he wants exactly what you know, yeah. and maybe um, listens to all the different variations of, mm -hmm. let's say, keep it off, uh, on Mahler 8. Yeah. And if you're a jazz player, yeah, it's one chord would be enough, and if you're a free jazz player, you just start and you, you listen and you develop um, uh, the the thing along. So how does this idea resonate with uh, with you? Or or maybe my question: What's your score? Oh, what's what's what's, what's my score? Um, I think it's 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 always um, starting with where we come from and where we are now. And then looking around uh, to all possibilities, but not so the easy possibilities laying around, you know, yeah. because um, I really love problems <laughs> and challenges. <laughs> so when I when I read a, an article or I read um, uh, a newspaper about a company who has a lot of problems, then I'm I'm almost uh, calling them, you know, I, they, oh, this is interesting to solve this and to, to look into the problems. And then uh, when you are honest, then you can imagine that there are many guys before you uh, look to this problem and they came with the most, yeah, maybe simple or the most uh, natural uh, solution. So, so looking uh, further, um, uh, and that's also what I'm doing when I make these improvisations on, on my clarinet, um, like okay, you can play on an, on a normal traditional way clarinet, but then you can also go into the into the deep and 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 try to play two clarinets together hmm. once with in in your mouth and then see what's 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 happening there. Uh, so or, or two clarinets in your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Rasan Roland Kirk and jazz, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 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 and and then see okay, what 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 brings this in in sound? What brings this in in technique? Uh, or you can say, okay, I I I will I, I will uh, put uh, one piece away, or or I or I, I have done a long time improvisations on uh, alto clarinet from sixty years old, and it was not it was imp it was impossible to make sound with this instrument because it, it had a crack from like almost one meter long, and then I was playing on this instrument like thirty minutes, but it was impossible to play, and and then finding solutions and finding certain sounds and I think um, also when you are guiding people or guiding a company or an institute or whatever um, you have also to go in these non-conventional ideas because and of course you have always to come back in reality you can't do this in a kind of but um, but this, this this trick or this exercise is almost an exercise uh, um, uh, to find new things and to come back. Yeah? It's the same thing when, when I'm listening to, to music from Iran or music from, from I don't know where. Uh, for me, it was also really interesting to come back to Mozart and to uh, use this, 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 this way of playing, not, not this way of playing actually totally, but some ideas about articulation or about coloring transpose it back into this performance of a Mozart piece or a Beethoven trio or something. Mm. And then mm. then I'm really, that's for me making music, actually. And of course, <laughs> some people, for some people, it's going too far. Yeah? Um, and of course, you stay b within this framework. You don't do crazy things. But, but, but um, there are a lot of performances I'm, I'm a little bit bored. Uh, and boring performances are a little bit like okay, but I know what's coming now, and uh, it's like when you take a book and and it's 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 a book like every book, you know, and then then you are not you think oh yeah, that's a book, but suddenly you are yeah attracted to something, and this attraction I think this is really important um, in performing, but also in leading and managing and and and, and bringing a company or an institute further uh, into the future. Mm. And is this the, the right choice? You never know. But that's also not so important. When, when, when you make improvisations, sometimes you get stuck somewhere. You think, oh, no, I don't want to be here. But, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the nice thing of, 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 of going in this 
to yeah to take these journeys and 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 to take these directions. Yeah. Mm. I, I want to to cycle back to mm -hmm. to the alto clarinet with a crack <laughs> because um, that's. Um, you can have different perspectives on it. One would be from, you blow into it, this is not a decent instrument, let's mm -hmm. put it away, that would be one. Let's say also, if you, if, you're a if you want to play this instrument with Mahler 8, you, you wouldn't use it, mm -hmm. so it's, um, um, you won't, uh, wouldn't do it. And the other thing is to take something like it is mm -hmm. and try to listen to the instrument while you are playing it. And and from for me that this let's say that could be an analogy in how you lead people. Yeah. So not just having a team of people with their job roles and what's on their business card, but trying mm -hmm. okay, who's here? Mm -hmm. Who is in the room? Mm -hmm. No, of course. And and sometimes you have, yeah, you work with people like um, yeah, like some let let's say somebody who is. Um, is um, doing the financials and 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 is doing really is acting on a strange way or is is using a language you are not used to but yeah you can fight to it and on the end you can say okay uh, go away i don't need you i take another one but i think you have also to embrace uh, specific people or yeah it's 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 a part of us you know and of course, there are limits on it, <laughs> but but this embracing like this alt clarinet is is having this problem, uh, uh, and we do together. But this this is one of my instruments. Mm. And actually, it's 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 at home. I have a row of instruments, and it's it's standing there. It's not in a in separate uh, room or something like that, or mm -hmm. laying around. It's one of my 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 tools. One one of my instruments where where I'm using. So I think it's 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 the same with people uh, even more and and. It's coloring your life. It's coloring your company. It's 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 also it can also um, like like this instrument will will bring you in a certain direction. You know, when when you can only make air uh, sounds, yeah, then then you can play um, uh, multiphonics or something on it. Mm -hmm. uh, when that's on, but so you can have this, you can make air. <laughs> so and then then it's like with some people, yeah, this is it, but. Can it be a, a specific part of our being, of, of our of our existing? And then, yeah, you see the, the it's it's really beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you get yeah, in love with it. And I think this love part is also a really important one in 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 a company. Not not like real love, but but it's this idea of love and understanding and supporting and and give people chances to grow give this alt clarinet a chance to, 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 to come again on stage mm. and, 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 and be the alt clarinet what it is, that's, that's really important, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's, an, that's an open door for me now to ask uh, further the question, <laughs> do these instruments, and we stay, still stay in the analogy, mm -hmm. do these instruments have expectations? And do they have expectations that you might, yeah, how, how do you know what they expect from you? Oh, I think uh, I think when you are when you approach it in such an open way, you, you you get all the time back what what you give. It's it's like conducting also. You 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 have this this nice story. There are a lot of stories, but you have this story with with conductor who is shouting to the orchestra and and really angry and and you know this this typical old way of working. And uh, after a few rehearsals, uh, the conductor uh, come on stage and, and counts like three, four, and there is nobody playing. And the concert master is standing up and he says, Maestro, these are you without us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so teach him a lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and I really believe it's also in, in, in normal life. Uh, uh, when, you, when you never give something, you will never receive something. Yeah. And when you are open, people will also be open. And then you can also, you have a kind of um, atmosphere where you can really open talk to each other. Like, okay, I see this and this and this, and maybe you can... Uh, go for this one yeah. or uh, this is maybe not it's like a good friend mm -hmm. you know this 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 open that you say okay but yeah Raf, you want now to run a marathon but i don't think it's such such, such a good idea to <laughs> maybe you have to start it with first five five miles or something like that so so that's 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 um 
uh, this good advice and then professional advice. Um, I think this is this is the open way. And, and, and when you come on stage with this alt clarinet and you 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 use the instrument to play Mozart, yeah, then then it will not work, never, mm. Mm. you know. And that's b- people also. So so you have to to uh, yeah the context and the openness. Uh, to approach each other yeah. is really important. And it's also what's on the concert poster. So if there's Mozart and um, you don't play it, that would be, yeah, you don't meet the expectations of your audience. No. But if they come and say, interesting concert, <laughs> unheard sounds, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then everything yeah, is I, possible. I did some experiments with it, but because once I was like a kind of fixed guest in a, in a, in a certain city in Flanders, And I always played a little bit, yeah, classical music, but also some more contemporary music, not improvisation, but but written, but a little bit not too hard, you know, like like medium, <laughs> medium rare, uh, um, and and uh, for many years. And then suddenly uh, they asked me again to play, and um, yeah, I was thinking, oh, maybe I can. Uh, I heard a piece. Uh, a few nice pieces for a soprano, voice, and clarinet. So it's really rare. Two instruments mm-hmm. and no no uh, harmony instrument or, or something like that. So, and I approached a, a, a singer and I said, okay, um, do you want to, 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 to do this program? Ah, yeah, yeah, when is this? Ah, next year, um, September 2023. Ah, yeah, we will see. Then a few months later, ah, yeah, you remember the concert? Yeah, yeah, we will see. And then suddenly it was August. Uh, she was on holiday. I was on holiday. And then we had just a chance to meet each other 30 minutes before the concert. Like, not before, but a few days before, we had 30 minutes to drink coffee. And that was it. <laughs> and suddenly it was there. It was like, okay, mm, this is a little bit mm, hard. And you have all these people coming with a kind of... And then we decided, so... Make make an improvisation. Mm-hmm. Let's make uh, a one hour improvisation. Yeah, well. uh, and of course, I did an introduction. Like, okay, guys, <laughs> you are here now for a concert, but you know, there's no music, and uh, even there was no rehearsal. We have just this this uh, this this beer. Uh, how how do you say it in English? Be- beer filled. Yeah, 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 beer filled. <laughs> we we written like, okay, first ten minutes you do this, then then you do it, and then you, uh, you know, and. Um, Yeah, and uh, it was just a few months after I have done this really amazing uh, vision quest. Maybe you know this 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 idea. This is something from the Indians, uh, and actually um, really practical. You go to sit uh, like uh, 24 hours, uh, or even a little bit longer, uh, on a mountain all alone, um, just sitting down. You are not allowed to sleep, and you have to listen to nature and what's going around you and then afterwards you speak with shaman about all these 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 things you heard and he's translating it in amazing things about your life it's really a, a fantastic experience so so mm-hmm. and i explained to the, the the people like okay i had these experiences the singer was uh, in a buddhist uh, uh, monastery for several months and now we meet each other like and the audience was really like uh, First of all, surprised. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it's it's possible to do uh, to do this. Uh, I, I, to to be honest, we did this the same for a kind of music club in the Netherlands, and that was a little bit not so <laughs> had not so positive uh, uh, end because uh, people came in 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 the room like full dressed. Uh, um, And uh, they were really stiff, you know. Mm. They came to a Mozart concert, and they had expectations. And, and, and <laughs> I was I dressed. A, a, I had a, a red dress, <laughs> uh, an Indian dress I bought uh, when I was in India. So they were really like, "Why are you wearing a dress?" You know, <laughs> it was a like, culture crash. And you felt we were playing. You 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 feel the audience, of course. And you, I felt some. <laughs> and in the middle of the concert I, I stopped it playing and I said uh, let's sing together mm. and I started to sing a, a Yiddish song and it was, <laughs> can, can, <laughs> it was really special can, can you sing it for us? <laughs> just uh, just that we have an idea <laughs> and so on and so on and they were really like 
uh, yeah, please sing. And everybody sing. Uh, okay. And then, <laughs> and then afterwards there was a kind of reception and uh, and one guy said, ah, I didn't like to sing. It was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like this. The, so, you know, so people have to also be. And that may, maybe that's the same in a company also. Everybody needs a kind of certain open view to the topic because... Uh, and sometimes in education that's that's hard because you have professionals who are just doing this specific thing in education for many many years, and then to widening up their view. Mm. Uh, of course, they are they are they are fantastic professionals, high level, but they are just doing this little yeah. segment. Maybe it's the same like uh, making with a classical uh, classical uh, orchestra, professional orchestra, an improvisation. You know, yeah, people say, right. "What are you doing?" No, I don't make this noise. I don't want. And you know the CEO, and 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 I'm not paid to do this. And I now it's twelve o'clock. I have to leave. And you know, the, you, you yeah. get suddenly this 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 problematic situation. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that um, vision quest that connects to something that we had in earlier episodes about deep listening. You mm -hmm. might know Pauline Oliveros, yep. and uh, um, and there's there there's a lot of um, uh, about it. I will go in two weeks. I will go into the Pyrenees with okay. uh, Hans Joachim Redelius for for a workshop, and that's deep called deep listening two. Okay. <laughs> so it goes even even further, um, and it also connects to John Cage to four thirty three. Yeah, and uh, I, I can share with you. I did on the first Design Thinkers conference. I did okay. um, uh, um, a breakout workshop. And I told them about the piece for minutes and 33 seconds of uh -huh. silence. And then we performed it after lunch. Okay. Without telling the people what it is. Uh -huh. The people were encouraged to listen and to hear. Yeah. And that was interesting. Then you get a discussion. What was it? Is this music? Is this do, is this a joke? Is mm. this a, a whatever? And actually, it's about real the, the, the deep connection um, with everything that's already there yeah. in a room, in a meeting room, on a mountain. So of that course. really um, resonates a lot with me. Um, I want to to just come to, 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 to one point you, you just mentioned, and that's actually more about organization. Thus the way that you are and think so even start start as a as a young boy dreaming about con mm -hmm. conducting D do you think this has an effect in the way how you're leading um mm. the d uh, design academy yeah totally totally um yeah where shall i start <laughs> um I, I think this is really affecting everything in life i think but 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 especially um because you are aware when when you come when you meet a, a new orchestra eh, and, and you come in this 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 uh, or new group of people new a new compilation you have these few minutes to to feel and to to recognize atmosphere to recognize characters to recognize situation and to put your somewhere on on the field which okay i'm here and i'm standing for this and this and this and you can approach me like this and this and this and this awareness um that people look to you and that they certain way need you but also don't want to need you <laughs> because the most yeah most pleasureful thing is to uh, work in a company without a boss and maybe also to play in an orchestra without a conductor you know um, and being aware that you have this position, um, that you also, that you have moments you have to disappear. There are moments you, you don't need to, to be there and standing like, okay, uh, no, no, just disappear and, and let, the, let the flow go. And then sometimes you say, okay, but this is dangerous or here I want a little bit more color or not non-color or what, what, what even, then, then you appear. And I think when you do this with respect, the same respect you approach musicians, of course, uh, then they allow they allowed you, they, 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 they will allow you to be there and to guide them on a certain way. And then when the, you give them space and respect back, then there's come again this flow this circle so um, so 
I take a lot of my experiences as a conductor into my my day day by day work. Yeah, yeah. And um, even on that way that I can't sometimes I can't imagine that you when you are not a conductor you can meet <laughs> a group of people. <laughs> that's that, but that's also nonsense because you have different approaches, of course. But uh, but it helps me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A beauti- beautiful beautiful picture of that leading and following or yeah. accompanying each other mm-hmm. you you walk along or you 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 part of a certain part of the journey yeah. and then you depart and you wave yeah. goodbye and then you meet uh, meet again in that way you have a, a f- for me one of the most inspiring and most fantastic pieces in in music history written uh, is the the Ligeti uh, chamber concerto uh, and that's a piece that's like guiding a company or an institute. It's like you have a lot of moments that's just in in timing and with figures uh, repeats and really freely. Um, and it's such a good composition that when you conduct this piece with students in Porto, what I've done with the conservatory, then it's working. And when you do it with high-end professionals here for the radio in Flanders and so on, then it's also working. So, so you can't. <laughs> it's impossible to break this 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 piece down, and 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 there are such nice combination of really difficult and complex uh, metric things in combination with totally freeness. And and then you get also this cage feeling, like what's 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 the music, what's 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 there, what's not there, what I'm, uh, and then the question like. Okay, what I'm hear- hearing, are you that also hearing? Uh, uh, why, why is it's, it's coming like that? And and so, this piece has a lot of um, uh, similarities with mm. f- for me, of course. It's uh, also experiencing kind of, uh, something together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, and it's it's for me it's a big uh, big inspiration. So so but. Every day, yeah, of course, you have some really hard days as a director, but but um, also as conductor, I can say. Um, but uh, every day is, is really, um, yeah, it's full of inspiring moments and, mm. and, and lessons you learn, like in music. Eh? You, you, every time you play or perform or rehearse, you learn something. Yeah, that's also like in this institute. Uh, you, you're working around projects and then you start with a kind of opinion and then you oh, no, but maybe, oh, this is also possible. Oh, mm, we can do yes. it like that, and 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 I think this 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 way of uh, approaching um, um, situations, problems, uh, challenges, um, it's really important to uh, stay sharp and, and stay on the job yeah. because uh, it's a quite demanding job uh, to to uh, to work in an institute like this. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. One question, or maybe one of the last question. Um, what kind of music do the students hear? This, how do they Ooh. listen to that it's organization? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 that's, that's fantastic. First of all, the music that they are listening is quite surprising. Um, it was G- Joseph Grima, my, my colleague, came to me. and, and we, so, so we started here a radio. So students have their own radio. They make radio. And uh, there was a party or something like that. And... Um, yeah, I went to my hotel in Milan and, and Joseph was still there. And he texted me like, it's your music playing, uh, my music. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite similar with the improvisations and the abstract, really abstract music. Of course, there's a lot of electronic music eh, they, they make. And last week I was in a concert. Um, I'm chair of a concert, a little concert organization here in Eindhoven. And they work together with students and they did a concert for students, by students. And first, first act was was quite, yeah, DJ acting, uh, electronic music, live sampling thing. Um, it was interesting. Second act was really amazing. I was blown away by the performance and, uh, uh, yeah, going uh, <laughs> over the edge, but not a little bit. But but <laughs> it, it was really amazing what what was happening there. And uh, so, so, so the music f- from the students, let's say, that's that's when we talk about music, uh, then it's really surprising, not so far from my from my world. <laughs> uh, um, the music, um, and that's now is the complicated part uh, of the answer. Um, 
the music in more abstract idea regarding institute and studying. Um, that's quite a challenge because um, we have many, many uh, international people coming from everywhere almost. Uh, they bring their own culture, they bring their own uh, uh, behavior. Um, above that, they are yeah, young people uh, between 17 and, and 25 most of the time. Yeah, you know, this, this, they are growing up, they, are, they, are, yeah, they look like uh, uh, full grown, but sometimes they act uh, <laughs> uh, on another way. Uh, but they are really smart, uh, um, they are really thinkers. They are also really good in their in their in their passion, so that's a mix that it makes like um, sometimes a really complicated piece, <laughs> 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 and then um, yeah, then it's like um, the way you select pieces for your ensemble of when you make a year program. Uh, I for twenty years uh, uh, ensemble contemporary music. Uh, from living composers, so everybody sent me pieces, and then, yeah, you really have to select like, okay, this is this is honest, this is new, this is maybe old, uh, something not interesting thing, and and so also in these conversations you have to select and you have to, but also be open and communicate on a really good basis, so so students know they can reach me uh, yeah, every day, er, every moment, to, to have a talk with me about everything that they want. And uh, in the beginning it was uh, when I told, yeah, you can call me uh, every day, uh, not on Sunday morning, but you, I'm open. Um, yeah, they, they, laughed, they was laughing a little bit, but it was not happening. But now more and more they're really mm -hmm. like, oh, can I talk a little bit with you? Mm -hmm. or, and sometimes about music, about a music project or, or some research about music but also about us, uh, other issues or the institute or some lessons or so so um, but that's that's um, that's all that, that, that's a real challenge it's also really imp uh, important or interesting for me because um, you can be as contemporary that you want to be but on the end you are born in a certain year and you have a certain framework that's also with improvisation eh? you can say yeah you always have a framework, even when there is no framework. Then, then, so, uh, and you approach things like your framework is 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 is, is allowing this. So, so, uh, and students are really stretching this, and uh, and in that way, we are living in really interesting times where where there is a kind of yeah, real big shift coming on, or happening actually now uh, around uh, diversity, about uh, gender, about, about everything what you want is is it changing really uh, fast changing uh, uh, yeah. cycles. So so that's uh, that's interesting. It's like there are all the time new instruments and new and new composition, <laughs> new combinations, and like oh okay, this is also possible. So uh, right. maybe it's a little bit like the alt clarinet. <laughs> 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 well, maybe that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a very good point. I think yeah. uh, to to call it a day. Um, I think also these um, these frameworks or these uh, personal perspectives that make that make it um, yeah makes it interesting and uh, also these patterns and that uh, you can take from analogy to from music to design but maybe also from design to music. Yeah. So, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you mm. and moving from one part to the other yeah. and wish you good luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I really so appreciate much. this because listening is one of the top leadership skills and I feel honored about this. It is my mission to find, create and share inspirations for meaningful collaboration based on music analogies. If you want to support this, please subscribe to the podcast give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Spotify. And more inspirations can be found on musicthinking.com. We have a blog and you can download the Music Thinking Framework. And finally, I would love to hear your feedback. And if you need help with a business challenge, please reach out to me via email podcast at musicthinking.com. <laughs>